800-951-0592. Uh, Jerry Springer passed away. I, I remember, uh, yeah, I remember Jerry. Remember uh, Geraldo, uh, when Geraldo got beat up uh, on Jerry Springer? I, I, that was probably, for me, when I think of Jerry Springer, that's kind of the, the first thing I go to, you know? That that was Jerry like Springer TV TV porn, if you will, right? Jerry Springer took the Geraldo Rivera uh, KKK episode, wherever that was, and and he and he turned it into a show. He's like, wait a minute, that works. Let's just let's just fabricate it, because <laughs> it did. After a while, you could tell the people that were doing it. You could tell it was it was all stage right. and, and and fake. It, those weren't real. The Geraldo thing was a real fight. <laughs> But, but, but uh, yeah, you know, it, I, I, it, it kind of changed how people view TV, right? It used to be, remember, you used to have like, a, I don't know, like, I don't know, Phil Donahue. I, I'm aging myself now. Phil Donahue and oh, Sally, yeah. Jesse, Raphael, right? They, they were these serious things. And then all of a sudden, here comes Springer, and and it just turned into this circus. And then, of course, we got... Uh, uh, Maury, because I I love I I know that Maury's gonna. I used to love Maury with the the is he or is he not the father shows. Those, those were the ones I liked the best. Yeah, so, so they definitely took the the afternoon morning talk show and then they basically looked at NASCAR and was like, well, people are watching it for the wrecks, and they just figured it out, Joe. That's that's what happens, <laughs> right? right. So, uh, there you go. a little little uh, side sidebar there. I just saw the headline, so. Uh, rest in peace, Jerry. Uh, speaking of wanting to rest peacefully, if you got your gold and silver put away, you sure seem to sleep better. Uh, we've got uh, really the mark pretty flat here. Gold and silver pretty flat. Uh, yesterday we were running platinum. And again, I'm making this call. I made it earlier this year. Uh, really bad news yesterday out of South Africa where 70% of all platinum is mined in South Africa. They don't have power. Quite simply, every single day this year, the major platinum mines have been running at reduced power. And, and quite, well, what does that mean? Well, it just simply means we can't, we're not gonna meet our production targets because we don't have enough power to make the to to mine the platinum we thought we were going to mine, and Jason, platinum was already going to have a significant supply deficit for 2023, and and unfortunately, what happened yesterday was the South African uh, utility notified the miners again, saying, "Hey, listen, it actually we actually think it's going to get worse." And the major platinum miner came out and said, if we lose, if we get reduced any more power, there will be days where they don't send any miners uh, under the ground. Uh, so again, I think there's, this is kind of a very, not kind of, this is a very bullish setup for platinum. It was already way undervalued, right? Normally uh, platinum trades above gold. I mean, that's how it's been up until the last couple of years, with the exception, I think, of a very brief moment in the 80s. Platinum has always traded higher than gold, and we got platinum right now at around $1,100. Uh, and Jason, I, I, I'm going to make this call again. Uh, you know, do you build your whole portfolio on, on platinum? No. Uh, but man, I think it's a good time to maybe add some platinum into your portfolio. We've got two choices for you. We've got one ounce platinum bars, and they come in a card, uh, and, and it's got the serial number of the, the whole nine yards, a one ounce platinum bar. They're $1,275 per ounce, or the one ounce platinum eagle coin that's the one minted by the u.s mint the one ounce platinum eagle coin for 1395 dollars and then on the gold side ten dollar liberties it's the buy it, it's just the best buy eleven hundred and ninety dollars like i said gold's off uh a dollar here 1995 uh eleven hundred and ninety dollars 
It's $120 less than a 20. If you got two tens, $120 less uh, at $1,190. And I still got some fives. I'm surprised. I didn't think we would, but we do. We still got some $5 liberties. Those are the quarter rounds at $630 at $800-951-0592. And I'll just, I want to remind everybody, thank you so much, by the way. Everyone has been really patient on silver. Uh, we've gotten, I think, uh, uh, I know Jason uh, got all of his five-ounce five, five ounce bars. We got ours the other day. Uh, we're almost pretty pretty well caught up. Uh, but when you're ordering silver, and I don't care what it is, junk silver, silver eagles, uh, bars, whatever it may be, just be patient uh, because, Jason, premiums are sky high because availability is really low. Yeah, that's exactly correct. Silver's silver is in high demand, so just uh, just sit tight. But Joe, it's interesting you were talking about the uh, the, the platinum and the shutdown at the mines, and I just uh, so I, as soon as I hear shutdowns at the mines, I know I know what that did to rhodium a couple of years ago as it just skyrocketed. And so I looked down and was like, well, they're shutting down mines. What's happened with rhodium? Because rhodium is a byproduct of, of platinum and palladium. There it is, rhodium up a thousand and fifty bucks. I mean, that's how fast that thing moves. On just so what you're saying has to be true. Hey, we're yeah. not sending guys in. We're not going to mine as much, and so rhodium is not going to come up. I mean, I'm guessing they were probably running this thing hard because rhodium finally was coming down. The price wasn't twenty five or fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, I know rhodium grand. got like close to thirty thousand at one point, uh, and, and yeah. uh, I haven't looked at it lately, but I know it was below ten. Yeah, today after you you know after you announced that news, it's like, well, let me look at it. Look, look, I always look at rhodium when you talk about mines shutting down. It's like, yep, there it is. Because I think essentially you did your research years ago and said there's essentially yeah. two major rhodium mines: one in South Africa, I'm betting it's the same one, yep. and one in Russia. Yep. That's it. Yep, thousand bucks. The only I mean, that's, two for rhodium, that's how fast yeah. things can move. Rhodium is a good indicator of how fast things can move. Silver and rhodium kind of share how fast they can move when uh, supply gets uh, gets gets weird, and so. Uh, you know, hold on to your hats, Joe. This thing can this thing could heat up really fast. Uh, it, it's all boring for a while. It slows down the news cycle, or whatever, and, and then just all at once, things just happen. You know. That's, you know what's uh, funny is the 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 Federal Reserve. They uh, they do these surveys. Matter of fact, I got to do a census survey. You should see the. I should. Be, I, I'm not gonna, but I should. I should read it to you. Uh, if you don't do this survey, you you can be criminally prosecuted. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. But but uh, the Federal Reserve does the these surveys, and they reach out and they're reaching out to to, to businesses and and probably most of them I would say are probably the bigger and the medium size. But when we get back, I'm going to read you what the businesses were saying about conditions. That's coming up next. Patriot Radio News Hour. Get that platinum put away. Get those $10 liberties put away. 800-951-0592. Jason and I will be right back. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Joe and Jason, Patriot Radio News Hour, uh, platinum. Uh, we're, we're reinstituting our call. You know, we made it the first time we made this call. Platinum was below a thousand. Uh, now it's just below eleven hundred. I'm telling you, do it again here. Uh, one ounce platinum bars, twelve hundred seventy five dollars. The platinum U.S. Eagle, one thousand three hundred and ninety five dollars. Uh, and those ten dollar Liberty gold pieces at eleven hundred and ninety dollars. Uh, but Jason, I'm going to do uh, two things. One, I want to read to you what businesses are telling the Federal Reserve in their surveys. And then something happened for the very first time. And it had to do with cross-border payments in China. The, that's cross-border payments in China. And these amounts are staggering. It's why it's so important. Of course, we've been talking about how quickly countries are now willing to deal in the Chinese renminbi. Uh, but first, what are these businesses telling the Fed? Let me give you the headlines. We need an incentive for people to work. But what he's trying to say is, hey, we got to pay more. right? I mean, what's the incentive? Uh, pay more. 
right? I mean, is there any other incentive? We have a 10% increase or more in cost of our materials. Oh, there's that stagflation thing again. A 7% increase in cost of labor when it's available. Of course, well, I got a solution for that, <laughs> right? They're not going to like it, right? But maybe it needs to be a 10% increase or a 12%. We have raised prices 5%. Uh-oh, that's not good. Let's see, costs are up 10%. Labor's up 7%. We only could increase it. Well, raise, raise it some more. And guess what they said? We want to, but we can't do more. It's hard to make money this way, right? That's a a pretty brutal uh, assessment. Inflation is still a big problem in our little corner of the world. Some, Some things are better, but other things are worse. We're also looking at another round of significant price increases in the near term. And again, Jason, this is kind of a theme through all of this. All of these businesses are saying, hey, uh, we're slowing down. Prices are still rising and we expect more rises. Can't get help. Oh, and by the way, uh, now now we've got another problem where uh, we can't even raise prices anymore because uh, if we do, no one's going to buy our stuff. So I guess that means I'll raise the rates next week and consider another one until they, uh, what they're saying is we're closing down next week. <laughs> That's, yeah, is that what they need right? to hear? They need to hear we're closing down next week. Oh, okay, we'll stop raising the rates. Maybe that's maybe what you're reading is a that, that, that's just not a it's not enough of an emergency to stop yet. You know, maybe we, that's we are seeing a slowdown in sales. We are readjusting our production for 2023 and 2024. How about this one? Inflation is killing my business. Everything is up. Hard to get my price increases passed along to the customers. Also, employees are very hard to find. We see we see another one. We see softening in our industry. The size and frequencies of new orders from current customers seems lower. And new business orders are definitely smaller. So these are these are what businesses are telling the Federal Reserve. And again, Jason, if it was only 1.1% GDP in the first quarter, and this is what they're saying today, and yet the Fed is still raising rates and contracting the money supply, I think that's why a lot of people are saying this, this is a recipe for failure. Now, what size businesses? Is it just a, a sampling of all, or is this just larger size yep. businesses? No, yep. it, to be fair, they, they try to, to, to sample all. And they don't, unfortunately, they don't tell us in these reports what businesses, the name of the business, the size of the business, but they 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 do a sampling. Big, big businesses, medium-sized businesses, small businesses. Uh so so you you know. But you get the flavor. And, and here was the thing. This was across all categories. And and, and the the uh they were talking about how this is this symbolizes what every business seems to be telling us, regardless of what industry they're in. Yeah, I get the feeling that that's a big part of uh, how they decide what they're gonna do with the rates, Joe. So I have I I wonder if that, even though as bad as that sounds, I wonder if that's if that's they're waiting for that to be a little worse before they, uh, they yep, shut off. Yeah, you're right. It's you know what? Do you know what they want to stop hearing? Labor's hard to find. Labor's expensive, right? We've got labor problems. Uh, <laughs> with, they, yep. they need incentive to work. They want that to go away. Well, how does that go away? Well, everybody got fired. So now, guess what? There's a lot of people that want to work and and they'll they'll be happy to work for minimum wage or happy to work for for less, right? That's what they want to see. That's exactly I think you, right. I think, you've exactly. Nailed it. I think you've nailed that, right? But there's still a lot. How there's about, still a lot of money floating around. There's still, there, you know, no matter yeah. what, that was a lot of money. Forty percent of all the money in this country 
was printed in 2020 and going into 2021. That's it takes a little while for that to completely slosh out of the system. We're seeing it; it's finally coming to an end. But, but Joe, yeah, you're right. Exactly what you said. Those those indications from those businesses. It doesn't sound like, hey, if this doesn't change, I'm gone in six months. I'll bet that's when they stop raising the rates, Joe. Yeah, maybe you heard it from the one guy. Inflation is killing my business, and one guy says <laughs> it's hard for me to make money. But all the rest of them seem to say, yeah, everything's expensive and I'm still, you know, uh, this labor thing, right? So there's still some more to go here. When we get back, how fast is the rest of the world willing to buy Chinese stuff in Chinese renembis? Something happened for the very first time in March. I'll tell you what it is. Final segment here on this Thursday, Joe and Jason, Patriot Radio News Hour, uh, by the way, Chrysler wanting to get rid of 3,500 uh, employees, uh, and they're willing to pay them uh, to leave. So again, the tr the trail of layoffs uh, continuing to rise, but uh, the big story of the day, the Chinese renembi became the most used currency in cross-border payments in March, surpassing the U.S. dollar for the very first time. Now, I want to be clear on this. This is cross-border payments in China. So this is China buying and selling goods. For the first time ever, they accepted more renminbi payments than dollar payments. Uh, and... Uh, it's only getting worse. Now, here it was the speed that caught me. Uh, uh, Renembi cross-border transactions and receipts totaled a record $550 billion last month. That was up from February's record of $435 billion. So, Jason, in just a month, it jumped by over a hundred billion dollars uh the u.s dollar uh now only comprised about 46 percent of all chinese cross-border transactions but you get the scope of how big china that's a trillion dollars a month really of of cross-border payments and now the renembi uh is taking the lead and and the the speed of it you know it, it's one thing hey wow well, we increase it increased 10 billion Okay, well, okay, maybe that was one tanker of oil. No, it increased like $120 billion in a single month. Yeah, it's an interesting uh, game that uh, China and other countries that want to get out of dollars have to play. If you have a significant amount, China and Japan being the, the biggest owners, uh, for, foreign owners of dollars, You know, if, if, if you dump too much onto the market, it, the rest that you ha are holding suddenly have no value. So they, they have to do this slowly and very con concisely they have to really be smart because what what if what if china tried to sell 200 billion or, or 400 billion all at once joe right of, of what they're holding you know th these transactions they have to it has to be slower than probably most people that are are, are understanding this the way we do joe which is the dollars are going away but you, countries don't want to use dollars but you can't dump them all because they're holding so much you can't make what right. you're currently holding worth less well, listen, China's gone from $1.2 trillion in dollars to, what, $800 billion in falling. Yep. Uh, and it looks like it's going to continue to fall that way. But it's not just them. you got to remember, the countries that are taking the renembis, they need less dollars. And, and again, yep. we're at a time, right, budget deficit's getting ready to blow up. And, uh, they, you know, they want to increase the debt limit by $4.8 trillion. And I kind of laugh. I'm like, oh, well, that, that'll get you about 18 months, right, you know. Uh, very, very interesting in reports circulating that uh, I know for a fact, I want to say it was Ghana is now trading gold for oil. And there are rumors circulating that Saudi Arabia is potentially getting ready to do the same thing. I will say this. I haven't seen any evidence of Saudi. Ghana's doing it. I haven't seen that Saudi Arabia is doing it. Uh, I've looked at the numbers in the at the Shanghai exchange, which is because, you know, that's where I'm assuming they're going to get it from. I haven't seen that yet. But, Jason, could you imagine 
if the Saudis started taking gold for oil, uh, what we could be looking at? All in due time, I guess, right? <laughs> at some point. If inflation gets bad enough, that's what you do. Patriot Radio News Hour. Jason and I, were coming right back with the half-empty cup. 